unfortunately, um, even though various methods have been implemented, we are still having um, accidents involving flaggers. An AFAD is a device that comes in two different formats. There is a red-yellow lens AFAD, and there's also a stop-slow AFAD. Uh, the, the purpose of an AFAD is to use in a work zone. When you close a lane on a two-lane, two-way roadway, typically you would use flaggers to control the traffic flow through a work zone. The way these devices work is you would have one flagger that would control two units. Uh, with a remote control. Uh, you, typically the, the flagger will be either near one of the AFADs or will be somewhere in the middle of the job site where he or she can see either device from either end of the project. This is something that the FHWA has recently added to the 2009 MUTCD and we also plan on incorporating that into our 2011 Texas MUTCD. Now one of the concerns we had is when you have a stop slow paddle, you no longer have a flagger there that is present at that location to ensure that the cars are staying in their queue uh, before they can proceed to go through the work zone. So what we were concerned about, do motorists truly understand what wait on stop alone means as a standalone sign? So what we did is we came up with various uh, types of signs that we thought would help uh, in, in trying to convey the message clearer to the motorists. And one of the ones that ended up being very successful based on the focus groups and field studies that we did out on our sites uh, that we did across the state was a uh, combination of text and symbols. One sign said wait on stop, but the stop was actually the stop symbol itself. And then we had a secondary sign that said go on slow, and the slow was also in a symbol format as well. And we found that the people comprehended that sign more than the standard signs that are required in the federal MUTCD at this point in time. Based on the research, we found that both the stop slow AFAD and the red yellow lens were very comparable to each other. The one thing that was kind of unique with the federal manual is that the red yellow lens AFAD required a gate arm to be installed with that unit. The stop slow AFAD did not require a gate arm. One of the questions we had with this research was why did one particular unit require a gate arm whereas the other one didn't require it. We felt that there would be benefits to having a gate arm to ensure that the vehicles did not intrude into the work zone when they were not allowed to. And based on the results of this research, it did prove that we had better results when the gate arm was installed on both units as opposed to just the red yellow lens. Another uh, finding that we found through the research was that by putting traffic control devices, specifically cones along the center line for a two-lane roadway, that by putting the traffic control devices right by the AFAD as you're approaching the device, we found that we had a higher compliance rate also. And by putting these cones along the center line, along with the, the gate arm and the newly designed sign that we tested and seems to be working very effectively, we think all these three factors will help prove the use of an AFAD. Uh, another feature that we discovered on as part of this research is you could add a, an intrusion alarm to the AFAD. Uh, the intrusion alarm, what that does is if someone goes through the work zone and doesn't comply with the device if it's in a stop mode and the car decides to go through the work zone, there are, there's an intrusion alarm that can be installed that will notify the workers that a car has gone through the work zone when they weren't supposed to. It's another tool that could be used to try to pull the flaggers off the roadway uh, to ensure they don't get hit or impacted by a vehicle in a work zone.